My name's Heidi, and I live in Santa Cruz, California. I have a 28-year-old daughter. She is very musical. She doesn't play an instrument, but she's a great singer and an amazing artist. My daughter's been in recovery for the past four years or so. I became aware that my daughter was using substances around eighth grade with some of the experimental drugs and then evolved into heroin use at uh, about age 19 after she finished high school. Then realizing that this was really not how she wanted to live and reached out for help, at which point we tried a, an outpatient detox program that I administered. So she didn't make it through the detox, relapsed. It wasn't long before she was reaching out for help again, and she bounced around from different treatment programs at that point. Eventually, it was clear that a treatment program wasn't gonna help. She wasn't committed to her own recovery at that point, and, and her option was to go live in Honolulu where her dad was living, and she stayed sober for about uh, 90 days there and then relapsed. She got arrested for stealing from Home Depot and then trying to return the goods to get cash. That happened two more times. She got out on probation, then got caught again, got out on probation. When you get caught three times, it's a, a class C felony. And the, so then she was in jail and that's not a great place to be at all. And detoxing in jail, which is really horrible. Stayed there for about four months and then got sentenced to a program called Hope Probation, which was started by a judge in Honolulu to deal with mostly meth addicts cycling through the criminal justice system. The HOPE program is like a drug court where these cases get handled. There's a separate judge who handles HOPE probation cases. She shows up at court with a group of other folks who are entering the program with her and the judge welcomes them into the program and the judge got down off the stand, walked around, and came in and shook each person's hand, looked them in the eye and said, you know, welcome to the program. It was very compassionate, and I think that made a difference. It's such a, a difficult thing to do to find a good treatment program because there are folks that are preying on people who are desperate to get help. When I first became aware that my daughter was actively using heroin, immediately the impetus was to go get help. And at that time, all I knew were 12-step programs. That was just the automatic response. And so I started going to some 12-step meetings. And you know, for some people, they're, they're great. For me, it, it wasn't a place where I felt like I got the support that I needed. I ended up often feeling worse after I left the meetings rather than better. I was staying up at night, you know, freaked out about her well-being and, and crying all night long, just scared, so scared and uh, stressed. <laughs> I was clenching my teeth so hard that my back molar cracked and I had to get my tooth pulled and at that point, I realized, okay, time out. I need to do something different here. And I think that's what happens, you know, it's so easy to just get sucked into being focused on doing whatever you can for your loved one, for your child, that taking care of yourself goes way by the wayside. When I started losing body parts, it was a wake-up call. And so I started searching around for other ways to get support and came across, I think it was on the internet again, um, a group of of mom, a mom's group run by a woman who was trained in the craft model. And one of the key components of that craft program is self-care. The coach who was leading the group basically you know, told us self-care is really important. You need to do self-care and would incorporate different methods of self-care and ideas for what we could do for self-care and encourage us to to prioritize that, which just completely goes against everything that 
your the cells in your body and, and your mind is, is saying to do because I'm compelled to try to keep my child alive. When you hang your well-being on the well-being of your child, it's too much, even for an adult child to bear. Once I got permission to start taking care of myself as a way to also take care of my daughter, lots shifted. There was more understanding. There was more ability for me to be present with her, to have empathy. It took some of the pressure off of her and it allowed for us to have a more open communication. Uh, it allowed for her to be willing to share some things that she might not have shared previously. We entered into a little bit more of a collaborative relationship as opposed to a, you know, me focusing on trying to fix whatever's going on for her. I came across the Partnership to End Addiction when I connected with this mom's group that was facilitated by a woman who had trained at the partnership. And so I became aware of the resources available through the partnership, um, the coaching that they offer to people with a loved one in addiction, the peer coaching that's free, which is just such an amazing resource. And the whole emphasis of the approach, like, like I said, just resonated so much more with me. Staying connected with your loved one, not pushing them away, um, that, that what I say and do can have an impact on helping to move them towards recovery. I decided to train to become a, a parent coach or a peer coach myself in order to be able to give back in a way and, and support people who are earlier on in the process in hopes that they can avoid some of the things that I ended up going through because I didn't have the right resources. My name is Heidi. I live in Santa Cruz, California, and my daughter has been in recovery for three years.